Darklings. So it's been a little while, but uh, a few months ago I was talking about doll making and polymer clay adventures, and at that point in time I had only made this gentleman, my little Troll King. So shortly after I finished the Troll King, I started working on a bunch of other projects. And for those of you that follow my Instagram, you've probably seen all of them before but it is a little bit nice to try and put them all into one video. But before I show the rest of them that are off to the side over here, I did grow up reading the Spiderwick Chronicles and grew up with Tony Jatera Lizzie's illustrations. And so the field guy definitely gave me a lot of inspiration for how I think of fairy creatures and how I visualize them. And so for cases like trolls, they definitely have a lot of influence from his work. But in addition to that, Alan Lee and uh, Brian Froud's fairies definitely have something to do with it as well. Um, with characters such as Granny De um, Jenny Green Teeth and Fukas and goblins and all this good stuff but I mean I could do a video alone on Brian Froud and I probably sort of already have uh, and while I cannot make art dolls quite as well as Wendy Froud can because I don't do it professionally their work has definitely influenced how I think about doll making and how I pictured making these creatures so I think, I'm trying to think, what was the, the one that I made immediately after the Troll King is this little boggart named Jax. And he was from a short story that I wrote. Um, I did not succeed in making him a little ale tankard because he was drinking in the original story. So his body is actually made out of a Prosecco cork. So I made the hands and the head out of polymer clay and then his legs and arms are made out of wire and they are stuck and attached to a cork and then I sewed fabric around it. So none of these are for sale before anyone asks because I still have no idea what I'm doing and all these little characters are decorating my apartment in a very eclectic manner that um, suits me. So there's a lot of experimenting going on here. I mean, I made him this little coat without a proper um, pattern and had to try and figure out how to get it on to his arms and sew it to the rest of the coat and everything. But uh, I think the one after that was this guy that I just lost the stand to that fell on the floor in a dramatic fashion, which is uh, my little key keeper. And this one is kind of a struggle because he's really top heavy so he doesn't have very good balance so he's got this big fluffy tail that makes squirrels jealous but uh i didn't give him real legs so they're just like wine corks but i did give him four arms so i guess i can be excused for being a little lazy about the legs but if you turn his tail his head shakes i think probably one of the the most ridiculous aspects of him is his horns growing through his ears but I mean he has like little pearl eyes and this big old robe he's got like this little collection of keys and baubles and stuff on his his little belt um this one was not like a great success but it still looks really nifty I like his hands his hands have a lot of character they're kind of creepy all long fingered and everything and there being too many of them just adds that extra bit of flair to set him down since he doesn't have a stand. Um, the next one, and this one also had a, was beset with its own problems, which this was uh, Jenny Green Teeth. And I tried making her hair out of this like plastic swamp grass stuff and it didn't sit flat. So I put this like mesh thing over it to try and flatten her hair. But one of these days, if I ever acquire a heat gun, I'll kind of use it to melt it just enough that it'll kind of stick down to her head. Um, I kind of miscalculated her arm length here. They're like comically long and I meant them to be slightly less long than this. They don't really bend individually, but they do bend like this. Um, 
But I mean, she's definitely creepy and her teeth are in fact in there and green. But um, I did actually remember to give her feet, but her legs are again made out of wine corks because I don't like throwing things away. And so I hoarded corks from several months worth of wine and definitely integrated it in here. I mean, she has a skirt that's mostly made out of layers of cheesecloth with this mesh stuff that I can't remember if I got it from Michael's or Joanne's. Um, and then she has this very grassy hair. Um, Jenny Greenteeth is a fairy from um, English folklore that steals children who wander too close to ponds. This one was a little bit more simple, like um, a little straightforward because it doesn't bend. And this is a little frog girl. I, I named her Keely. I don't know why. But um, she, I ended up glazing over. So all of these are like acrylic paint glazes over polymer clay because adding like watered down acrylic over polymer clay kind of gives it like more dimension than just trying to rely on the clay color itself. So the hair is the sheared sheep's wool I got off of Etsy and I, I got it for my little troll king and then I just didn't really expect one ounce of hair to be so much hair and so I've been using it in other projects. Um, and then she has like her little cheesecloth and um, fabric wardrobe thing here. She's like slightly sticky because I used this high gloss uh, this high gloss medium over it so that she would look perpetually shiny because she's supposed to be like a frog. Um, with her little teeny tiny amber bead clasp thing going on here. I don't know how well any of these actually show up on camera. But um, I have a lantern about this big that has a bunch of um, fake grasses and stuff that she lives in. So most of these, the ones that are on stands, I have hanging out in my bookcases, but these others I have hanging out in like cages and lanterns and stuff in my office. Um, this one was kind of not one of the more successful experiments, which is a little grasshopper guy. The wings, I. I didn't make um, under the ivy on Etsy made them and so I bought them from her I bought several sets of wings and I've used them in a couple other projects as well but this one just didn't really pan out the way I was hoping to I tried baking it in separate pieces to hopefully make it easier to connect everything and I it was just kind of a, a pain in the ass I mean it looks okay but it, it's not my favorite this little this little grasshopper guy with his big black eyes and too many legs Painting it definitely saved it a bit, but it's still not perfect. And then this is a very Tony to Tara Lizzie looking troll. This is a very Spiderwick looking troll. And this is all one piece um, because it was just easy to do that way. And then I, I just kept this one kind of simple. Um, sewed on a piece of leather for the tail. Gave it like little shorts and a little uh, green coat with a little tiny necklace and a bracelet, um, seed bead eyes, a little bit of paint. So this one, I didn't want this one to be especially frilly. I just kind of liked the idea. I, I drew up a bunch of different random fae looking designs in my sketchbook and just kind of went with that. Um, this one over here, I can't really take it out from under the dome because of how it sits. So I hope it can show up, but this is just like a little pixie girl. And again, the wings were from under the ivy on Etsy. Um, but this one, again, isn't posable. Like, it looks like her wrist is broken in there. But I meant to give her clothes, and then when I painted her, I just decided I liked the way that she looked without them, and fairies aren't especially modest or anything. It's not like they care. Um, but I did like her big pointy ears and her creepy little pointy mouth and like her like little speckles that I hope show up that make it kind of look like the inside of a foxglove. Um, the little ground stuff on the bottom, I got this, I don't know, spool of fake grass stuff at Michael's. Um, they were having a sale on their spring stuff and I, I just cut a section of that and it's super, it sheds everywhere, but once you actually get it secured in there, it looks like a nice, a nice base for stuff. Now this guy over here might be a little bit tricky to, uh, free from his cage. I don't know how many of my viewers are familiar with, with fairy folklore, 
or especially care about it or anything. Or, for that matter, just read the Spiderwick Chronicles growing up. But maybe you've heard of a Fuka or a Puka or any number of the things that I'm sure I'm mispronouncing it as, which is a, I believe, Irish fairy that looks somewhat like a goat and a rabbit. Now he is very, very fluffy. I did several layers of faux fur across the front of him. And he is a very mischievous looking little creature with his weird padded fingers and his little goat horns and his big ears and and everything and his too many eyes. He does have like little secondary eyes like a spider. Now he is excessively fluffy and he is in fact quite poseable, but the fabric I use to make him sheds everywhere and so I'm like really careful with him. But I mean in, in a lot of fairy fo um, folklore, Fuka's definitely like to wreak a lot of havoc. They're very much troublemakers. Admittedly, I, there aren't a lot of fairy stories in which the fairies are not troublemakers in some form or fashion because they are not necessarily evil, but they, they are rather chaotic and do not have the same moral equivalent as humans. So I'm fascinated by all of this stuff. I, I love I love it and I, I grew up with it. I, I got Lady Coddington's Pressed Fairy Book when I was seven by Brian Froud and that was my introduction to him. And I was given the, the Spiderwick Chronicles when I was about eight and I grew up with Holly Black and uh, the Wicked Lovely series came out when I was a teenager. And so I've been steeped in the fairy folklore stuff for a very long time and I've just always liked it. As I'm sitting here struggling to put him back, I will worry about that later. Um, and so it's, it's very, there's so many different kinds that it's just really easy to, to go crazy and explore. And then this one isn't a fairy. This one is just an experiment. This was just trying to make a bust and it worked out okay. And the, the same, the same lady I bought this wool from sent me like a sample of this white wool and I decided to use it as the hair for this little vampire lady. Um, she looked very, very weird when she was without hair and I got kind of creative and I struggled with it a little bit, but I finally got all of it to stay and she ended up having a tiny crown because it was the only way to like fix like the weirdness of how the hair was sitting. But again, she has like little beads for eyes pressed into the polymer clay before I baked it. And then she has little hoop earrings that I put through before I baked it. And then I did light glazes of color and it kind of helped bring it to life because it looked really flat and weird um, beforehand. So I figured I, I would show those off because I, I think people generally like those. Um, at least I hope they do. Otherwise, uh, you're, you might be disappointed in the video quality. Anyway, till next time, Darklings. <laughs>